and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, but it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. your wife this far, you'd have brought her on into Dodge for me to care for. I sure would have liked to do that, Doc, but Cassie just carried on about it, something terrible. She said she just couldn't stand another turn of them wagon wheels, so I come to get you. Where are you bound? We ain't decided on where to settle, Doc. Just heading west someplace where it'd be dry for Cassie. Oh, well, you're traveling for your wife's health, are you? Huh? Yeah, Doc. That's the reason for it. You see, Cassie's been ailing for a year or two back home, and finally we just figured to light out yonder and see if it'd help her some. When did she start to sicken? Mm, must be a week now, Doc. First she tried to keep on going, but it just got to be so she couldn't stand it to ride the wagon no more. So we stopped. Mm-hmm. Let me see what, well, what are the symptoms? How's that again? What seems to be wrong with your wife? Is she in pain? Can, can she keep her food down? Well, I ain't much up on what ails women, Doc, but she's coughing an awful lot, for one thing. She's awful weak. Can't hardly move around. Uh-huh. Uh, I'll examine it. Uh, the wagon's around the next bend, Doc, down by the stream. Uh, <laughs> I was beginning to think it was in the next county. <laughs> Down there, Doc. Turn down there. Now, I'll, I'll head in right here. Under this tree. Oh, uh, 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 that's good, Doc. Uh, you go on into the wagon now. I'll unhitch my horse from behind the bucket. All right, Riley. Uh, 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 it's kind of a hot day to be under all that canvas. Mrs. Riley, I'm Doc Adams. Your husband brought me from Dodge. Mrs. Riley? Easy now, Mrs. Riley. I'm going to turn you over this way. What a name. Riley! Riley, come here, quick. What's the matter, Doc? Easy now, Riley. What's the matter, Doc? What, what is it? I'm sorry. Dead. She's dead? What, can't you do nothing? No, I can't do anything. She's been murdered. Get on this floor till the grave with. Won't hurt nobody none to stomp off their boots before he comes in. Uh, uh, where's Matt? Oh, Doc, where you been at? We was looking for you. I haven't time, Chester. I gotta find Matt. Where is he? 
Uh, hold your horses. He's right back there. Hey, you're looking for me. Oh, Matt, yes. Uh, you'll have to ride out east of town right away. Oh, what's the trouble? There's been a murder. A woman. Name of Tassie Riley. Well, that's terrible. Oh, how did you know about it, Doc? Her husband came to Dodge to get me. Wanted me to go out and treat her. They were on their way west in a wagon, and she got sick. When I got out there, she was dead. You say she was murdered? That's right. She'd been beaten to death. Oh, where's the husband? Well, I, I brought him in with me. He's up in my office. I better have a talk with him. No, no, it won't do much good. Why not? Well, to tell you the truth, man, I gave him a bottle of whiskey and told him to drink himself to sleep. He was in terrible shape. At least still might be able to tell me something. Chester. Yes, sir? Get the horses ready. I'll meet you at the stable in a few minutes. Yes, sir. Come on, Doc. I left everything out there just the way it was, Matt. I didn't move her or anything. That's good. You'll have to bury her, Matt. Yeah. That's one thing I've learned how to do. Don't seem right. Everybody riding off and leaving her laying alone in that wagon down there, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Riley's staying wouldn't have done her any good, Chester. Well, he told you about some trapper being around, didn't he? I don't know if he told me or not. He was muttering about a trapper that had made a camp with him all night. Well, you're sure going to look for him, ain't you? Yeah, yeah I'm going to look for him. That's hard telling. Uh, maybe that's our answer. What? Look over there. Why? It's a platform like up on poles. Mr. Dillon? Yeah. That looks like one of them Pawnee graves built up that way, don't it? Yeah, it sure does. I declare, I ain't never heard of Indian stopping a burial quiet. Have you, Mr. Dillon? No. That framework don't look like it's been up there very long, does it? No. Wood's fresh cut. All right, Chester, you hold it steady while I take a look, huh? Sure, Mr. Dillon. What? Behind you. Disturbing graves ain't seemly. You. Them has passed on and got a right to rest. I'm a U.S. Marshal. It's my job to find out who's up there. Well, I can tell you that. Thought you on rest tonight. But you tell me who you are first, huh? You call me Ben. Don't you have a last name? Not that I never heard, mister. Are you a trapper? Well, I trade some in pelts and skins. Uh-huh. Now tell me who's up there. A girl woman. Who put her there? I did, mister. The Indian grave? How come you buried her Pawnee style? The Pawnees reared me, mister. I learned their ways. And their burying strikes me a sight nicer than digging in the ground. Did you kill her? No, mister. I didn't kill her. He's bloodied up like he could have done it. All right, mister Dillon. Doesn't look good for you, Ben. Well, I reckon maybe it don't. I'm going to have to take you along with me till I find out about this. Into town? Mm-hmm. To Dodge City. You gonna lock me up? Until I find out who did this. Well, I ain't never been locked up. Chester, get his gun. Yes, you. All right, hand it over. 
you're slow asking. How's that? I could have shot the pair of you four if I'd been a mind. That's right, Mr. Dillon. He could have done just that. Yeah, he couldn't. All right, come on. Expect a man to stand things better than that. Sometimes you expect a lot of us, Kitty. Sometimes I get a lot, too. Well, I guess I better go talk to her. And he's down at the end of the bar. Thanks, Kitty. Sure. Riley? My name's Riley, all right. Who are you? Matt Dillon, the U.S. Marshal. I came to see you the day Doc Adams brought you into town. I don't remember that. No, it doesn't matter. I, uh... I'm sorry about your wife, Riley. You're too late, Marshal. It'd help if you told me what you know. What I know? You know that my poor wife lies murdered? My poor wife said I was bringing West to get well. Was she sick? She's sick and all the way west, Marshal. I was bringing the doctor to her when we found her. Poor, weakening thing. And when you got there, she was dead. Beaten, Marshal. Beaten. That's a terrible thing for a man to see. Yeah. I'd just like to get me that trapper. What about the trapper? That trapper fellow's the one that done it. We shared fires two nights back, and he was leering at poor Tassie the whole time. But you figure he followed you, huh? Sure, Marshal. Couldn't have been nothing else. You didn't take out after the trapper. But no, Marshal. Tell the truth, I, I was just plumb sick, and when the doc had to give me a powder... I sure would like to get my hands on him, though, and that's a fact. Well, you may get the chance. What do you mean? He's in jail. Come on. I tell you, Marshal, it... Giving me the sickness again. Just thinking of seeing that trapper. You'll be all right, Riley. I was wondering if, if I hadn't ought to stop by docks first. Let's stop in here first. He's back there. Hello, Riley. All right, Riley. Do you recognize him? For certain sure he does, mister. He camped the same fire two nights running. He's a trapper. Made me mighty sorrowful coming on your wife that way. Didn't seem hardly like it could be seeing her living so strong just the night before. Riley says you did it, Ben. Why? He bad mistook. He said you were following him. Well, I was that, but... Uh... A man shouldn't point no finger unless he's certain sure. He seems sure. Riley, you bad mistook. Marshal, that... We was friends, Riley. Well, you ain't got no cause to suspicion me. Marshal, it sickens me to look at him. I, I feel the need to get outside. All right. 
All right, Riley, you can go. But stay in town. I'll need you to talk to the judge. Sure, Marshal, sure. Mister? Yeah, Ben. A man shouldn't tell if he can't prove out. Well, he thinks he can. Maybe it's his grieving that makes him so bad, Miss Took. Yeah, maybe it is. Here's your victuals, man. I'll be pleased to eat. Now I'll say this much for you. You sure ain't no problem to feed. I ain't one to fuss down over eating. There you are. <laughs> ain't sure ain't like the usual on the people I get in here. More the belly ache and I get you'd think I was feeding them straight out of the hog pan. As long as you're fetching me free food, I won't complain, man. Well, I don't charge for it. That's one thing. <laughs> I tell you the truth, Ben. I, I don't find it too easy to figure you out. Oh? What's scrolling you? Well, you seem like a nice, decent kind of fellow. And you ain't no bother at all in that cell. You ain't snarling and mean all the while. Well, I, I don't aim to be. And yet you could go and do a thing like killing that poor little sick lady out there. Lay in on what was maybe her deathbed. Uh, you ain't talking about Tassie. Well, sure. Being ailing? Why, you know that, Ben. Riley was bringing Doc out to see her when he found her killed. He said she'd sick him so all the way west she couldn't hardly move no more. Who told that? Why, Riley told it, of course. He was the one to know. He was her husband, wasn't he? Her husband. Chester. Well, I gotta get on back. I'm mindful of that, but I... I figured you'd ought to know about that loose bar. What loose bar? That loose bar up to that window. Oh, my gracious. I certainly should know about it. Maybe I better take a look at it. You can climb up on that bunk there. It sure don't make no sense to have a loose bar in a jail, Winter. Just about got which one is it, Ben? Here. Yeah. Yeah. I sure do hate to do this, Jester. Listen here, Ben. Let, let, let me go now, Ben. I just got to tie you up, Chester. That's all there is about it. These folks will have to do me. You can't go and do a thing like this, Ben. Yeah. Oh, that ought to hold. Now, I ain't happy about this, Chester. You tell the marshal I was driving like that I ain't used to being kept in, and now I've got to move out of here. Well, it ain't going to do you no good. He'll find you. He'll bring you back. Yes, I reckon he'll have to try, Chester, it being his job and all. Bet your doggone boots he will. We all have to move in our own way, Chester. Now, you just rest easy until he comes and lets you loose. Matt's missing a meal, Kitty. He considers eating as much of a duty as his job is. <laughs> He'll be here. <laughs> I guess you're right. Certainly I'm right. By the way Matt and Chester eat, they'd need a chuck wagon all their own on a cattle drive. <laughs> you against eating, Doc? Oh, no, 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 certainly not. But uh, I don't specialize in it the way those two do. Want another fix pie? Hey, don't mind if I do, Kitty. No, I don't, I don't mind if I do. Oh, here's Matt. Hmm. Oh, Matt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you love to take it on a little nourishment, do you? It is, Doc. Yeah, as a matter of fact, I do. Uh, Joe, bring me some steak and potatoes and a piece of pie, will you? Sure, Marshal. All right. Yeah, Kitty was worrying about you, man. I think I convinced her that you wouldn't miss a meal. Oh? Uh -huh. <laughs> I've been talking with the judge. You're, what do you mean about that trapper that you got locked up? Mm-hmm. 
It looks like he did the thing, doesn't it? Yeah, Doc, it does. Well, I hope you have more than Riley's word for it. That man giving me the creeps, the way he's been carrying on. Yeah, he's taking it hard, all right. Well, I'm glad I won't have to be seeing him anymore. So what do you mean by that? Well, he was in the Long Branch this morning. He'd had a few even then. And he told Sam he was taking his last drink and Dodge. It was too hard for him to stay around so close to where his wife was killed. He was leaving? Well, I told Sam he was going to pick up his things at the Dodge house and move on. <laughs> Excuse me, Kitty. Doc, I better try and catch him. Chester, we got to get moving. The... Chester! I'm back here, Mr. Jones. Yeah. What? What in the... Would you... I'm tiny, please, Mr. Jones. How in the world did you get in this mess? Well, it was that fella band. Turn around. Well, what happened? Well, he tricked me into climbing up to look at that window. He said one of the bars had come loose. And then he jumped you, huh? Yes, sir, he sure did. Uh... He did tell me to... Tell you he was sorry to have to do it. Well, that helps. Yeah. There you are. Thank you. Well, he was just as nice as can be, but he, he said he had to move on. Well, that makes two of them. Riley moved on, too. Let's go get our horses. Which one of them are we taking out after first, Mr. Jones? I'm hoping we'll find them together. Well, I feel real bad about letting Ben get away, Mr. Jones. He'll be awful hard to track. He seems so used to this country and all. Don't worry about it. You better be got clean away. He's not trying to get clean away. What? Look there. What? Why, it's Ben. And he's got Riley. Yeah, I figured they'd be together. Come on. All right, Ben, let him go. Let him go. Now, what's this all about? It's proved out, Marshal. Marshal. Let him talk, Riley. It was him, Marshal. Killed his own woman. I know that as soon as I learned, he was spreading stories about how ailing she was. Why, she weren't ailing, mister. She was a young, strong woman and done all this caring and fetching. I know it was him when I learned that. And then it come to me why he was doing it. So he could make like he was away fetching the duck. Well, how about it, Riley? Wait, there ain't no truth to it. If he'd give me leave, mister, I could make him tell. I ain't one for hurting creatures, but it would come easy with him. Maybe that's a good idea. No, no, if you keep him away, Marshal, keep him away. You got something to say, Riley? No? All right, go ahead, Ben. No, all right, all right, I killed her. I killed her. She was making moon eyes at him, saying how nice and gentle he was. Now, a man don't have to take that from his woman. A man doesn't have to kill her, either. Chester, take him away. <laughs> Mister? Yeah, Ben? I'm sorry for the fuss back at the jail. Come to me that I, I couldn't do nothing in them four walls. Yeah, Ben, I'm sorry about that. You was doing what you figured was the right thing. Man can't always know for certain. No, man can't always know for certain. Um, come on, Ben, I'd like to buy you a drink. Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was specially written for Gunsmoke by Marion Clark, with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Barney Phillips and Vic Perrin. 
Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. This is George Walsh inviting you to join us again next week when CBS Radio presents another story on Gunsmoke. Latest news next on Walter Cronkite, Dave Cameron Sports, and the Mitch Miller Show on the CBS Radio Network. I love the music on CBS. I think they cover the news the best. I love the drama on CBS.